If you're shit at games, like me, and you want to get better at games, like me, then your only option is to cheat. And the problem with that is that cheating is kind of expensive. So the only way to get around that is to learn how to cheat yourself, to code the cheats. And that's why I'm making this video. Today I'm going to show you how to code your own external CSGO bunny hop cheat in C++. The cheat looks something like this. It's a little executable. You run it, it gives you some information. And in CSGO, you'll see, if you hold down spacebar, you can bunny hop around for as long as you like. And you can show it off to all your friends. Now, although it may look easy, it isn't. You can copy this code one for one and it'll work for you. But I suggest you go ahead and learn some C++ before this tutorial so that you have at least some understanding and you aren't completely blind. I'm also going to be using um, Visual Studio for this, so you should go ahead and download that. It doesn't matter what version of Visual Studio you get, just download it and make sure you install the C++ build stuff. Anyway, with that out the way, let's get into it. We're going to start by opening up Visual Studio. It's a good first step. And we're going to create a new project. We're going to make an empty project because all of these templates are annoying with a bunch of random shit in them, so we just go empty. I'm going to call this um, Pro B Hop. Uh, it's it's pretty good, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now over here, you see all of these weird files. I don't care about these, so go ahead and click this button, show all files, and this will show the files like they are on your disk. Make sure you have Pro B Hop selected, and go ahead and add a folder called Output. And in the output folder, make a folder called intermediates. Now, why are we doing this is because when you build, it's going to make its own debug and release folder, and that shit's gay. So we're just going to put it into our own folder. Now, we do need a folder for our actual source code. So uh, we're just going to call that cheat. Now, we need to change some properties before we get into it. Um, so... Right click, go to properties, and change the output directory to the folder we just made. Change the intermediate directory to the other folder we just made. And you need to add the backslashes on here. Make sure configuration type is set to application.exe. And make sure C++ language standard is set to, well, the latest one, because we're cool. Go ahead and hit apply. Next, go to Advanced and change Use Unicode Character Set to Use Multibyte, Apply, and then go to Linker, System, Subsystem, and make sure it's set to Console. Okay. Now, as you should know, every C++ application has an entry point, so we're going to go ahead and add that. I'm going to make a source file, we're just going to call it main. This is where our code's going to run, and we go ahead and make int main. We can leave it empty for now. We're going to need a couple more files, just two more. We're going to make a memory source file and a memory header file. These two files are going to hold our class that we're going to make, a memory class, which will allow you to fuck around with any game you want, but we're going to use it for CSGO. In main, just for the future, we're going to go ahead and include our memory class, our memory file. So in the memory header file, we're going to need to include Windows because we're going to be using the Windows API. It's a pain in the ass, but we are on Windows, so we've got to use it. Also going to include iostream, just so that we can print to console. Next, we can create the class, we call it memory. So in our memory class, we're going to have two private variables. One's going to be a D word. We're going to call it ID, and we're going to set it to zero. This is going to be the ID of process, whichever process you like. Then we're going to create the second one, and it's going to be of type handle, and we're going to call it process. And we're going to set this to null. This is going to be a handle to process. Next, we're going to go ahead and add the public identifier. And we're going to make a couple member functions for this class. In this class, we're going to need to get the process ID. We're going to need to get a handle to the process. And we're going to need to get module addresses. So I'll explain everything in a second. All you need to do is follow along. We're going to make a constructor and a destructor first. The constructor is going to take a parameter. And that's going to be the name of your desired process. 
destructors don't take any parameters. Next, because these are private variables, we're going to need a way to get their values. So let's create two simple functions to return their values. Get process ID is going to return the value of ID, and get process handle is going to return the handle. Next, we're going to create the prototype for our get module function. Similar to our constructor, get module address also takes the name of the module. You'll see why in a few moments. Finally, for the bread and butter of this class, we're going to make wrappers around read process memory and write process memory. Over here, I have MSDN pulled up, and you can see we have read process memory and write process memory. It's quite self-explanatory, but read process memory allows you to get the value of memory, and write process memory lets you change the value in memory. Now, as you can see, these functions are quite cumbersome, so we're just going to make simple wrappers around them. Let's start off with the read. All right, so that's our read process memory wrapper done. As you can see, read process memory takes a billion parameters, but we've shortened it to just a single parameter. That single parameter being the address of the memory that we want to read. And as you can see, it returns a type, so we have to define the type. Why we have to define the type is because read process memory requires the size of, or the amount of bytes that you want to read. This gives us a very easy way to read process memory, and it returns the value. Next, we need to make a wrapper around write process memory, as it's pretty similar to read process memory. We've made write process memory a bool because looking at the documentation, it returns a boolean. Read process memory also does, but we want the actual value that read process memory returns, so it's it's easier for us to just return the value. But with write process memory, you can check whether it is successful or not. Just an explanation of how this works. You give it an address and you give it a value that you decide. Now you have to you have to specify what type the value is. Once again, you have to do this because write process memory requires the size of what you are writing. Anyway, that's our header file done. Now we need to define these functions. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy these functions that are all underlined and then go into memory.cpp. We're gonna to need to include memory.h and go ahead and paste the functions. Now you need to expand them all. Now that they're all expanded and we have the code blocks, we need to add the memory namespace before them. We can go ahead and fill in get process ID and get process handle because they're fairly simple functions. All they're gonna do is return the private variable. So get process ID is going to return this ID and get process handle is going to return the process handle. Let's make our destructor quickly. Remember that process is a handle to a process and C++ doesn't do any garbage collection for you. So when you're done with it, you need to make sure that you close the handle. And that's what our destruct is gonna do so that we don't have to worry about this. It's very simple. So now we need to fill in the constructor of our class. In this constructor, we are going to loop through all the processes on your computer and find CSGO. Through that, that allows us to get the process ID, which then allows us to open a handle. Why do we need a handle? We need a handle because write process memory and read process memory need a handle. So in order to do this, we need to include tl help 32. We're gonna use this function, create tool help 32 snapshot. Going over to MSDN and looking at the documentation, we can see it takes a flag and it takes a process ID. The reason we use this function is because one of its flags over here, snap process, says includes all processes in the system in the snapshot means we can snapshot all of the processes running when our program runs. This is very useful because then we can use that in conjunction with process32 next, which takes a pointer to, process entry, to a process entry structure and populates it with the current process. The process entry structure over here holds our process ID, and it has the name of the executable, which means that we can search for csgo.exe and get its process ID. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna use this, uh, this flag, snap process, and we can just set the process ID to zero. Next, we need to loop through all the processes. Looking at process32 next, it returns a boolean. So while it keeps returning true, we are going to keep on running our loop. In this loop, we're gonna say if exclamation string compare, and we're going to compare process name to entry.scexe file. So we're going to check if the current process is equal to the one we've given, which is gonna be CSGO. And if it is, that's very good news. Because now we can set our ID to entry dot process ID. We can also open a handle to CSGO now that we have the ID and we can finally break out of this loop. 
Now remember, we've opened a handle here, so we need to close that handle. So if this constructor runs correctly, what it's gonna do is it's gonna instantiate this class, set the size. We have to set the size because it is a requirement when using process32next that the size has been set before we call it. So that's the only reason this is here. We create a snapshot with snap process, which gives us a snapshot with all of the current processes. We then loop through them with process32next. Every time it loops, it puts the next process into our entry, which means that it fills out all of this data with uh, the process data. One of entries member variables is szexe file, which is the name of the executable. Using this, we can compare it and see if it's equal to the process name we gave. And if it is, in our case, it's gonna be CSGO. If it is CSGO, we're going to set our ID to CSGO's process ID. We're then going to open our process and we're going to break out of the loop. We are then going to close our handle that we opened and move on with our lives. We don't need to close the handle to our process because the destruct is gonna close it. Plus we need to use it in our read and write process memory functions. The final function in our memory class is going to be get module address, which is going to be extremely similar to our constructor over here, although slightly different. Instead of process entry 32, we're going to make a module entry 32. Once again, we set the size. Now we're back at create tool help 32 snapshot, uh, but this time we're gonna use a different flag. This time we want the modules inside of the program. So we're going to use snap module, includes all the modules in the program. And we can set our process ID to that of CSGOs. Now we're gonna create a temporary variable here called um, result, just gonna set that to zero. And now we need to loop through all the modules, similar to how we did here. Instead of process 32 next, we use module 32 next. We pass in the snapshot and we give a reference to our module entry structure. Once again, we're going to string compare. If the module name is equal to the name we gave the function, then we are going to set our result. We're gonna set the result to the base address of the module. And then we're gonna break. Once again, if snapshot, go ahead and close our opened handle and then return, return our result. So if this function works correctly, it's gonna make a snapshot, but this time of the modules with CSGO's process ID. We create a temporary variable here, which is outside of the loop. It's gonna loop through all the modules. If it finds the module we want, it's going to set result to the address of the module. It's then gonna close the handle that we opened and it's going to return the address of the module. You'll see why this is useful in a moment. And that completes our memory class. Now it's time to start coding the hacks. Coming back over here to main, we are going to now instantiate our class. Remember we made a constructor for memory and it takes a string of process name. We're gonna make that CSGO EXE. This is gonna make our constructor loop through all the processes and find CSGO EXE. This is gonna populate our ID and our process. Next, we are just going to print some things to console. Okay, let's go ahead and test if this compiles before we go on to do anything drastic. Looks like it succeeded. Let's see if we are able to get our process ID. And it looks like we are. We have successfully gotten our process ID. We've looped through all of it and I'm going to assume we have the handle too. Now we need to get our modules. To make BRP, all we need is client. So that's all we're gonna get. Let's print out the value. Hex and dec stands for hexadecimal and normal decimal. Basically, we're just going to print out the value of client, which is, uh, we're gonna print out the address of client as hexadecimal, and then we're going to switch back to decimals for later, because we don't want everything printing in hex. Anyway, let's build this and see if we can get the address of client. And we can, we have the address of our client.dll. Now, we almost have everything needed to start coding the actual BHOP. All that we need now are the offsets. So I'm gonna create a namespace up here. I'm gonna call it offsets. And this is gonna hold our offsets. Usually getting offsets requires lots of time being spent reverse engineering, maybe creating a netvar manager, all of that fun stuff. Um, but we're lazy fucks and uh, we just go to Haze Dumper. Haze Dumper gives us all the offsets we will ever need to do anything. Luckily for making a BUP cheat, all we need is three offsets. I'm not gonna look through this right now. I already have them over here, so I'm gonna paste them in. To find offsets, all that you do is, as I said, you go to Haze Dumper, you go to csgo.hpp, and you look through here. Let's say I want the offset for my local player. I'm gonna hit Control F, search for local player, and it's not that one, it is DW local player. You get this offset. You're also going to need the flags offset over here, this one, and finally, you are going to need force jump, which is actually going to let us B hop. 
and this is the offset for force jump. Depending on when you watch this video, CSGO might have updated, these offsets might have changed, so please check and make sure that your offsets are correct. Haze dump is a very good place. So if you look here, we have this while loop and it's set to true. That means it's just going to run forever and ever, and there's no delay, which means it's going to pretty much use like all of your CPU to run this while loop forever, which does nothing. So we need to add a sleep in here. To do that, we're going to include thread, and we're going to type out this fucking disgusting line of code. We're going to sleep this uh, loop for five, five milliseconds every single time it runs. This is just because we don't need it running a billion times per second. Uh, this way it's only going to run a fraction of that. So to actually make the bop sheet, what we need to do is we need to get the address of our local player. How we get the local player is it is client plus our local player offset. We're going to start using our read and write process memory functions that we've worked very hard to make. Anyway, let's get into it. We need to get our local player. Local player is only valid when you are in game. So sometimes local player will not be equal to anything. Therefore, we need to check that local player is valid. We can do that by saying if local player. So every time this loop runs, we're going to get our local player. We're not going to be able to get our local player if we're in the main menu. So it's never going to, this if statement's never going to be true and therefore nothing's going to happen. But once we are in game and our local player is valid, we will jump into this if statement here. The next thing we need to do is use our flags offset to check if we are on the ground. In this line of code, we've made a variable called on ground, um, and we are reading a boolean from our local player address, which we've checked is valid, uh, plus our flags offset, and this will give us our flags. Now what flags does is it returns your current player's state. So this allows us to check if we are on ground or in air. You can call this variable whatever you want. We're just going to go with on ground. Now next we need to check if we are pressing spacebar and if we are actually in fact on ground. We can do that like so. Get async key state will check if you're pressing a key. So check if you're pressing spacebar. And to actually check if we are on ground, we use a bitwise comparison. Now, Rake from Guided Hacking wrote a really good article on this. Um, and as defined in the source SDK, on ground is equal to this shit. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if our flags offset is equal to on ground pretty much. And if it is, then we are going to go ahead and force jump. We force jump by writing memory and I will show you how to do that. So we're going to write a byte to client plus our force jump offset. And we're going to set that to six. Once again, going back to this article that Rake wrote, he explains exactly why it's set to six and everything like that. So I definitely suggest you go and read it and drop it a like. Anyway, we have now successfully coded our bunny hop cheat. So let's see if it works. I'm gonna go ahead and build this. Make sure you build and release for the best performance. Build success, no problems yet. Let's go ahead and run it. We got our client, we have our process ID. Hopping into game, if I hold down some that was terrible timing. Go, go, go. Let me try that again. If I hold down spacebar, I B hop. So voila, it fucking works. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helped. Look forward to more in the future and I'll have all the code on GitHub in the description. I also have links to the article by Rake. Cheers and I'll see you guys in the next one.